Tonight we have our, our car auction. We've nearly 200 cars from various finance houses, banks, and from different liquidations. It should be a very busy auction with uh, buyers from all over Ireland. 2212. Two, Best of luck to everyone. Some, some lovely, lovely product in tonight. Let's get on the way with lot number one. Nice one to start with. Start it up, driver. But again, don't move the car. Start it up. So don't move the car after I sell it. Lot number one is a diesel Bora, 1900 diesel, indirect from Pierce Construction in liquidation and receivership on the O3. As you see, it's business buyer. We're going to be on the O3. Get the way we're going to be. What's that? 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. 15, 15, 16, 2 bid, at 2,000 and a half, 2 bid, at 2, 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 at ο Ρίκη Γουίλσον έχει κάθε λόγο να είναι χαρούμενο. Η δουλειά του πάει από το καλό στο καλύτερο. Οι δημοπρασίε είναι ίσω ο μοναδικό κλάδο επιχειρήσεων που ανθεί πλέον στην Ιρλανδία. We have seen an increase in business since the end of 2007, which would correspond with the slowdown in the Irish economy. Um, that corporate insolvency end of our business has increased by between 30 to 50 percent over the last three years, uh, and that is primarily through to the increase in in the company closures and uh, repossessions happening in Ireland. <laughs> The most cases we've handled have been in the construction industry. In those cases, we would see everything from cranes to excavators, dump trucks, diggers, uh, pickup vehicles, small tools, really every sort of bit of tool and equipment that a construction company would use in their day-to-day -day business. Η εποχή που ο κόσμος εκστασιαζόταν με τις επιτυχίες του κέλτικου τίγρη έχει παρέλθει. 
Η χώρα μετά από 12 χρόνια εντυπωσιακή ανάπτυξη προσγειώθηκε ανώμαλα στην αγκαλιά του Ευρωπαϊκού Μηχανισμού Βοήθεια και του Διεθνού Νομισματικού Ταμείου. Στην ίδια θέση με την Ελλάδα και την Πορτογαλία, αλλά για λόγου διαφορετικού, που ωστόσο έφεραν το ίδιο αποτέλεσμα. Έσπρωξαν την Ιρλανδία από την κορυφή, από παράδειγμα προ μίμηση, στα πρόθυρα τη χρεοκοπία. The Irish government has asked the European Union for financial aid to tackle its banking and budget crisis. Tonight, European finance ministers said that package would be worth around 80 to 90 billion euros. We, the Irish people, have to pay a debt of 50, maybe 60, maybe 70 billion euros because of what the banks did. It had nothing to do with us. It is what the banks did. And it was the government that decided to place that burden on the Irish people. In all your answers to do with your own Brian Cowell's culpability for the disaster that has happened in this country, you have talked about the advice, advice you got, you've talked about the bankers and their culpability, the regulator and their culpability, the markets and how they've screwed us up and all that. At no stage have you acknowledged that you are the person now still holding public office who has more, most culpability for screwing up this country. Can you acknowledge that now? I don't accept that, Vincent, at all. And I will defend my position uh, throughout my political career in any decisions I took, the context in which I took them, uh, and the rationale for taking them. And when circumstances change, then their policies have had to change. For the first time in our history, we actually made money, which was in the 90s and up until this burst. We made money, but we behaved, as all groups do, who haven't had a record in making money before. We blew it on a party. And we can't have um, a bunch of idiots running the place the next time, uh, if there is a next time, that we make the type of money we've made as an economy in the past. You don't think that you've contributed to the screwing up of this country? I don't accept your contention, the premise to your question, that, you, that I am the bogeyman that you're looking for, no? But you, uh, who else? Who, who else in public office bears anything like the responsibility for the devastation caused to this country more than you? I don't accept that. And, and, I, and I, I outlined in detail uh, reasons why, why I can say that. But in this case, the Cassandras, and you know what happened to Cassandra. She wasn't listened to. And finally, with regard to, and finally with regard to uh, questions that you were asked before and debated before, maybe you won't debate it now. The reality is, and everybody bar you seems to know this, you're a liability, not just to your party, not just to your government, but to the country because nobody believes you. And also people know you're the guy most responsible for the chaos that has, that has been caused. Don't you owe it as an act of patriotism to the, Irish, uh, uh, to the Irish people to get out now? Sorry, Vincent, I don't accept the premise of what you're saying. The Ireland has never been seen as a pure country. Ήταν περισσότερο γνωστή για τη φτώχεια και τους λοιμούς που συχνά αποδεκάτιζαν τον πληθυσμό. Όπως αυτός του 1845, όπου μέσα σε 7 χρόνια 1,5 εκατομμύριο άνθρωποι πέθαναν από την πείνα και άλλοι τόσοι έφυγαν από τη χώρα μετανάστες, κυρίως προς τις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες. Ήταν μία από τις χειρότερες περιόδους της Ιρλανδικής ιστορίας. Σήμερα τα αγάλματα που θυμίζουν εκείνη την εποχή στεκόνται απέναντι από τα πολυτελή κτίρια μεγάλων εταιριών και τραπεζών που μέχρι πρόσφατα άκμαζαν. Σαν να υπενθυμίζουν στους Ιρλανδούς πως τίποτα δεν είναι μόνιμο ή δεδομένο. Ούτε η φτώχεια, αλλά ούτε και ο πλούτος. I think you have to remember that uh, the Celtic Tiger was really something that happened in the 1990s. Uh, so Ireland had been a very underdeveloped economy. Uh, and in the mid 1990s it began to grow very rapidly largely as a result of American investment. So you had this huge boom in America, the, the, the IT boom. Out of that, you got a, you know, a lot of the American multinational corporations had a huge amount of money to invest, wanted to invest it in Europe. Ireland was relatively cheap, was English speaking, had a lot of young, young labor, young, well-educated people. So it was a great place for, for American investments. And that really kind of set off the Celtic tiger as, as, as we know it. Mm -hmm. 
Για να γεννηθεί ο Κέλτικος τίγρης, η χώρα έπρεπε πρώτα να γίνει δελεαστική στα ξένα κεφάλαια. Έτσι η Ιρλανδία, χωρίς να της το έχει επιβάλει κανείς, εφάρμοσε από μόνη της ένα αυστηρό πρόγραμμα λιτότητας. Περικοπή των πραγματικών μισθών των εργαζομένων και συρρήκνωση του κράτους και των κρατικών δαπανών. Από την άλλη, οι επιχειρήσει ευνοήθηκαν και φορολογήθηκαν με μόλι 12% έναν από του μικρότερου φορολογικού συντελεστέ στην Ευρώπη. Αυτή η πολιτική δημιούργησε το περίφημο Ιρλανδικό Θαύμα, μια χώρα που ο ρυθμό ανάπτυξη ξεπερνούσε το 8%. Ireland throughout this period was seen as the laboratory in which neoliberal economics were proved to be right. So Ireland was the magic formula. It showed that If you cut taxes and you had very little regulation, the economy would naturally grow. And if you listen particularly to American right-wing politicians during all this period, but also British right-wing politicians and even some right-wing politicians in Europe, they would say, look at Ireland. You know, here was this basket case, this, this underdeveloped, failed economy. And they adopted the right policies. They cut taxes, they cut regulation. Magically, it's now one of the richest countries in the world. This proves that neoliberalism is not just an Irish formula, it's an international formula which everybody else should follow. And this also had a disastrous effect in Ireland because it contributed to the self-delusion. Uh, if you're a small country, a small country with a history of failure, and you suddenly got all these people around the world saying, you know, you are the star performer, what you're doing is, is absolutely right. It uh, enhances the natural tendency which was already there that Just because you were rich now meant you were always going to be rich. History was over. We had nothing to learn from the past. Ο Κέλτικο Τίγρη βασίλεψε στην Ιρλανδία μέχρι τι αρχέ τη δεκαετία του 2000. Μετά όμω, όταν η Αμερικάνικη οικονομία παρουσίασε ύφεση, ο Τίγρη μα αρρώστησε βαριά και πέθανε. The Celtic Tiger really finished in, in 2001, but weirdly, like a zombie, you know, it had an afterlife, <laughs> and, and the afterlife is really what we're dealing with because the American economy slowed down, the IT boom was over, 9/11 uh, happened, all of that, you know. So the Irish economy naturally would have slowed down. It wouldn't have been catastrophic, but it would have been a a movement from very very high rates of growth to just normal normal two three percent a year rate rate of growth would have been fine instead what happened was that uh, the government didn't want the economy to slow down so they encouraged a new kind of boom which was based almost entirely on property and banking and had nothing really to do with You know, people making things and selling them. <laughs> it was, it was a classic asset bubble. Σχεδόν όλη η Ιρλανδική οικονομία βασίστηκε πάνω στην κατασκευαστική βιομηχανία. Ο ένας τους έξι Ιρλανδούς εργαζόταν έμεσα ή άμεσα σε αυτήν. The government itself was actually cutting taxes for people to get into the property market. They were giving tax deductions, they were giving tax postponements to people to build student hostels, to build nursing homes, to build uh, hotels, to build holiday homes. Ο κύκλος του χρήματος ήταν απλός. Οι Ιρλανδικές τράπεζες δάνειζαν με χαρακτηριστική ευκολία και με χαμηλά επιτόκια κάθε είδους κατασκευαστή που ζητούσε δάνειο για να χτίσει οτιδήποτε. Επίσης έδιναν δάνεια και σε κάθε καταναλωτή που θα ήθελε να αγοράσει σπίτι. Οι ίδιε οι τράπεζε τη Ιρλανδία δανείζονταν από άλλε τράπεζε του εξωτερικού με κάλυψη την αξία των ακινήτων που είχαν προσημειώσει. And the bank lending was being financed not on the, on the backs of deposits in the banking system from you, know, you or me putting money in the bank, but from the banks going abroad, uh, especially in France and Germany, and floating off bonds. So German bondholders were, and French bondholders, were lending money to the Irish banks to lend money to people to speculate in the property market. Έτσι, ο κατασκευαστικός τομέας στη μικρή νησιωτική χώρα πήρε φωτιά. Όλη η Ιρλανδία χτιζόταν από άκρη σ' άκρη. Από το 2001 και μετά, η χώρα θύμιζε ένα απέραντο εργοτάξιο. Δρόμοι, σιδηρόδρομοι, κτίρια για πάσα χρήση και ολόκληρες συνοικίες ξεπηδούσαν σε όλη την Ιρλανδική επικράτεια 
Samanitaria. I remember a Fianna Fáil politician saying to me a long time ago, long before this, uh, he said, we measure progress by the number of cranes, builders' cranes that you can see on the horizon. I think the media did play a role in Celtic Tiger uh, bubble, um, that, for instance, a lot of newspapers made a lot of money out of uh, property advertisements. There were huge supplements in uh, the major newspapers uh, on property supplements, and that uh, there was very little critical comment about what was happening, so that the media, I think, probably failed during that period, and uh, you'd have to attribute some of the blame to the media. In the period of four on to maybe the middle of oh six, there was an absolute frenzy as far as property was concerned. And anybody that, that was able to go to a bank and raise money to buy a property, he could be absolutely assured that within six months of his purchase, he, that, that, that the value of that purchase would be doubled. Even go to the, to the local people in the local pub having a, uh, a chat over a drink. And the buzzword was, you know, what property have you? Where's your properties? And this is just the ordinary guy that's working in the street. I've just bought an apartment in uh, Cyprus. I've just bought an apartment in Turkey. I have uh, just bought two apartments in Spain. I'm going to buy another. I was really totally engrossed in this situation where we have to have property. O Johnny Owens paradóθηκε στη μαγεία της αγοράς και έκανε τότε χρυσές δουλειές. Από το λατομείο του τροφοδοτούσε με οικοδομικά υλικά δεκάδες εργοτάξια σε όλη τη χώρα. Και μετά αποφάσισε να χτίσει ο ίδιος. Πήρε δάνειο, αγόρασε τη γη και κατασκεύασε 45 σπίτια στην περιοχή του Μούλιγκαρ περίπου μία ώρα μακριά από το Δουβλίνο. We were going from strength to strength. Um, every year went by we were buying more trucks. Uh, there was more demand for the product we were producing. We were uh, very dedicated to our job. Um, I didn't spend my time going around uh, the world having a good time. I spent all my time within the quarry operation here working very hard, uh, starting before daylight most mornings and finishing well after dark every day. We thought that that was maybe near the, the top of the business as I would have wanted it. Uh, we had a turnover at that stage of the region 5 million euro uh, out of the quarry business. Την ίδια εποχή ο μεσίτης Τζοε Κέλι στο όμορφο προάστιο του Σάτων πουλούσε ακίνητα που κόστιζαν μια περιουσία το ένα μετά το άλλο. Probably in 2004. Uh, between 2004 and 2006 prices ju just went out of control. The, that house would have came out then at about, at 2004 it was probably worth 600, 650,000. And then it went from that in two years to 1.2 million. So that's where the thing got lost. Σπίτι αγόρασε για εξοχικό η Σουζανό Κάλαχαν. Είχε μια καλή και σταθερή δουλειά, ένα δάνειο που έτρεχε για το σπίτι που είχε αγοράσει στο Δουβλίνο αξία 800.000 ευρώ και άλλο μισό εκατομμύριο ευρώ που τη έδωσαν εύκολα οι τράπεζε για να αγοράσει το εξοχικό που πάντα ήταν το όνειρό τη. Because, and it seemed lucrative because property prices were rising so quickly. You know, even if you only held on to a property for a year, you would have at least made 20% uh, profit on it. So it was very lucrative. Everyone felt we have plenty of money. We can do this. We can make more money. It's so easy. It can't go wrong. Property will never fail you. I mean, there's an old saying that I heard a long time ago when I was buying my first mortgage, and somebody said to me, the, uh, the, the only time the property is expensive is the day you buy it. 
because after that it, it, it will make money for you that you know it was as good as gold it was never going to lose money Ήταν τότε που ακόμα και οι φτωχοί πίστεψαν πως υπάρχει ελπίδα. Το κράτος υποσχέθηκε πως θα γκρέμιζε τις παλιές εργατικές πολυκατοικίες στο St. Michael's Estate, μια υποβαθμισμένη περιοχή κέντρο διακίνησης ναρκωτικών. Σχημάτισε μια κοινοπραξία με μια από τις μεγαλύτερες κατασκευαστικές εταιρείες της χώρας, προκειμένου να κατασκευάσει καινούργια σπίτια και να αναπλάσει τη γειτονιά. In 1998, there were 240 residents living here. So 240 out of about 300 uh, flats were occupied. So all of those people thought that they would get their new houses on this site and to make it a really um, vibrant, energetic, uh, urban space that people can live in, that families can use, that children can come into um, over the next number of years. Στεγαστικών δανείων έσκασε στι Ηνωμένε Πολιτείε το 2008 και η έκρηξη ήταν τόσο δυνατή που γκρέμισε τη Lehman Brothers και το οστικό κύμα πέρασε τον Ατλαντικό και χτύπησε την ισιωτική χώρα. Η Ιρλανδική αγορά εκινήτων αποδείχθηκε εξίσου σαθρή με την Αμερικάνικη. Οι τιμέ άρχισαν να πέφτουν ραγδαία και ο αναπνευστικό ολίνα που κρατούσε ζωντανή την οικονομία. Έσπασε. Τα δάνεια κόπηκαν, οι καταναλωτές αποθαρρύνθηκαν, κατασκευαστικές εταιρείες βρέθηκαν με τεράστια χρέη προς τις τράπεζες και άρχισαν να κλείνουν η μία μετά την άλλη. down walk down today and it's empty the only thing that you might find in it maybe there's a couple of birds flying through but no 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 persons working it's like a black hole you're looking down into this black hole and you can see no bottom Η γειτονιά που έκτισε ο κύριο Τζόνι Όουεν είναι έρημη. Κατάφερε να πουλήσει μόνο 4 από τα 45 σπίτια που είχε κατασκευάσει. It all deteriorated to the stage where there was absolutely no interest whatsoever in a house of any description. Nobody wanted to buy. I was in, I suppose you could describe a state of despair, uh, having all those houses built, a uh, huge amount of money invested. Uh, And as I say again, bank money, uh, and no market, no sales. I, I really didn't know what to do. The first houses we sold on this site here were sold at 295,000 euro each, and the price we are now selling for is 149,950. So you can see. Exactly where the price drop has got us. Our indebtedness in the quarry here is plus seven million. Our indebtedness on the building side of the business is 12. So, like, our total indebtedness is plus 20 million. The 
Η Σούζαν Οκάλαχαν έχασε τη δουλειά τη καθώ η κατασκευαστική στην οποία δούλευε έκανε περικοπέ. I don't feel responsible for the situation that I'm in. I I do feel that um certainly I contributed by taking on a second mortgage for a second property and for possibly being naive in expecting that my salary would always be good and I'd always have a job. Perhaps I should have been more sensible and saved a lot more money of my salary which I didn't do. Um so in some ways I contributed to this. So I am fearful every month and every few months um of the future i don't know what the future is but i have to accept that i possibly may lose the house and i'll have to accept that if it goes it goes και οι άνθρωποι στο Saint Michael's Estate που περίμεναν την ανάπλαση της φτωχής γειτονιάς τους έμειναν με τις υποσχέσεις ενώ οι εργασίες είχαν ήδη αρχίσει Μπλοκ πολυκατοικιών είχαν ήδη κατεδαφιστεί και πολλοί κάτοικοι είχαν μεταφερθεί αλλού. Ο κατασκευαστή αποχώρησε παρατώντα το έργο στη μέση και τη γειτονιά χειρότερα από ό,τι πριν. As well, you know that we didn't know anything about at the time, so he was he was almost bankrupt as a developer anyway at that stage. So what we have left at the end of all of that are places like this. Τι Ιρλανδία, οι οποίε ήταν αδύνατο να επιστρέψουν τα χρήματα που είχαν δανειστεί από τι Ευρωπαϊκέ Τράπεζε, ζήτησαν τη βοήθεια του κράτου. Και το καλό κράτο έσπευσε να τη σώσει με τα χρήματα των φορολογουμένων. Τι εθνικοποίησε μεταφέροντα τα τεράστια χρέη του σε όλου του Ιρλανδού πολίτε. Just as Ireland was the great example, supposedly, of, of the success of neoliberalism. It also became the great example of the lie of neoliberalism. Uh, so, you know, Ireland was all about the small state, the state just standing back and letting the market do what the market does best. And then, of course, suddenly, when it's in the interests of of the ruling class, for the state to suddenly become an interventionist state, which 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 intervenes in the economy and takes responsibility for the banking sector, takes responsibility for all its debts, determines everything that's happening. These are people who, it's just like they went into the casino, they put their money on the table, they won a few rounds, they got crazed, they thought they were going to keep winning, they kept putting their money on the table, they lost, and then they turn around and they go out into the car park and they say to the to the guy who who, who cleans up their car, they say, here's the bill, you you pay my gambling debts, you know, and this is what's happening in Ireland. We aren't putting money into banks for the sake of banks. Is that as a small country, a small open economy, we need a viable banking system. We cannot afford not to have one. And had we not guaranteed the banks and given the support to the banks, our economic situation in Ireland will be considerably worse than it is today. By putting the support in for the banks, we have guaranteed a future for them. By guaranteeing that future, we are guaranteeing credit for our businesses, for our, uh, our consumers. And also guaranteeing the savings of those lucky enough to have. The word from Brussels was that under no circumstances should Irish banks be allowed to fail. Because if the bank failed, that meant the shareholders would be wiped out, but so would the bondholders. 
But in other words, what would happen then is that the, the problems in the Irish banks would become problems in German and French banks and in savings institutions. The contagion effect would have been from the failure of the Irish banks directly into uh, the German and French banking system. And uh, I suppose understandably, the EU, which reflects very strongly the views of uh, Berlin and Paris, uh, was not enthusiastic at the idea that uh, an Irish government in not guaranteeing the bonds would effectively export that problem to the rest of the EU, in particular France and Germany. Uh, capitalism is supposed to be based on, on risk and reward. You know, you, you, you supposedly have these uh, brave entrepreneurs who take all the risks and therefore we have to you know, let them make vast amounts of money because they're taking those risks. But of course the reality underneath that ideology is that when the risks are taken and, 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 and they fail, it's not the entrepreneurs, it's not the bosses who, who pay for it, it's actually ordinary people. Η Ιρλανδία βρέθηκε ξαφνικά με μια μεγάλη μαύρη τράπεζα. Μόνο μία από τι ετοιμόρροπε τράπεζε, η Αγγλοϊρλανδική, καταβρόχθησε 35 δισεκατομμύρια ευρώ κρατική βοήθεια, ποσό που αντιστοιχεί στο απίστευτο 22% του ακαθάριστου εθνικού προϊόντο. We had a situation in Ireland where a bank brought down a country. And you know, it's a hard lesson to be learned that. Banks will do this. If you do not control banks, this is what they will do. And when you have a banking model which creates multi multi millionaires out of the directors that run the bank, provided they grow the, the loan book, and that's the only measure that at share, shareholding price, it's a recipe for absolute disaster. Σήμερα στο τιμόνι της Αγγλοϊρλανδικής βρίσκεται ο Άλαν Ντιούξ, οικονομικός σύμβουλος που προσελήφθη από την κυβέρνηση για να βγάλει τα κάστανα από τη φωτιά. Very unwise, imprudent policies by the banks themselves. Uh, there were serious deficiencies in the regulatory structure here, which did not spot the emerging problem. Um, although uh, there were there were a good many warnings, uh, we're now dealing with trying to clear up the mess. Με το κράτος απλώς να παρακολουθεί και να απολαμβάνει τα κέρδη του ζώου, οι ελεγκτικοί του μηχανισμοί είχαν ατροφήσει. Ο έλεγχο των τραπεζών ήταν υπόθεση τη κεντρική τράπεζα τη Ιρλανδία. Κάποια στιγμή πριν από μία δεκαετία, η κυβέρνηση προσπάθησε να δημιουργήσει ένα νέο ανεξάρτητο ελεγκτικό μηχανισμό. Περιέργω, οι ίδιε οι τράπεζε οργάνωσαν εκστρατεία προκειμένου να μην αλλάξει ο ελεγκτή του και να παραμείνει στη θέση του. In place, it raises questions. Now, that's taking an extreme example, but it puts it into perspective. So, a, 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 a desperate compromise was reached, which meant that the central bank continued on in a slightly different guise to regulate the banks. Now, the problem in a small country like Ireland is that you get a thing called regulatory capture, where the people involved in regulation get far too close. To the people they are regulating, because at the end of the day, it's about people. I'm still going from town to town, uh, office to office, and business to business, and I won't give up. I will get the money, and that's the way to get money in this country: just get it into your head and just hunt it.
the, the new rule was paid when paid. When I get the money, I'll give it to you. And this is a case of nobody gets the money, so here we are two years on looking for payment going back three or four years, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, it is tough. I just need to... Um, look, the minute I get a few bob, you have it. I, I, I know I'm good for it. I mean, and, that, and that, like I said, every contract is covered by by the amount that's owed. Well, like I said, I paid you, I paid you in the past, you know what I mean? No problem. More than likely get paid today. Yeah, no, I understand you're in trouble. Well, I, I will, I will, the minute I get it, you have it. And like I said, you can call to the office anytime you want. We're, we're not hiding, and we always answer the phone. Right, number two, Turbine Teddy, Teddy is back in second, but up front, Compass Big Mick is flying down the back here, into the third bend, I'm taking it up now here. Okay, it it's in the distance, and I can't really see very If I did a job, I have to get paid for it, and that's the way it is. It's, it's not their money, it's my money. If people don't, if I make appointments and they know that I'm coming looking for money and they cancel it, I still go, and I'll still knock at the door. And if they don't see me today, I'll see them tomorrow. So, and I do this all the time. I've got hardened to this. To this. company here are agreeing to pay something. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I can promise that they're, they're not a bad company. But... Φυσικά η κυβέρνηση για να καλύψει τα τεράστια χρέη των τραπεζών που τώρα είχαν γίνει χρέη του κράτους πήρε αμέσως σκληρά μέτρα. Η Ιρλανδία ήταν η πρώτη χώρα της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης που εφάρμοσε δρακόντια λιτότητα με τον απίθανο στόχο να μειώσει το έλλειμμα από 14% σε 3% μέχρι το 2014. Μισθοί και επιδόματα σφαγιάστηκαν. Η ανεργία τριπλασιάστηκε. Η χώρα έγινε και πάλι παράδειγμα προς μίμηση. Αυτή τη φορά όμως όχι ως χρυσοτόκος όρνηθα, αλλά ως πρωτοπόρος στον δημοσιονομικό εξορθολογισμό, όπως έλεγαν στελέχοι του Διεθνούς Νομισματικού Ταμείου, επικροτώντας τις ενέργειες της χώρας. The Irish establishment has been obsessed with being the good boys, you know, with behaving themselves in the way that the European Union, the IMF, the international markets would want them to behave. So they did everything they were supposed to do, right? So they, they you know, cut public spending, they attacked the public service, they cut people's wages, um, they've, you know, they've, they've uh, bailed out the banks. So, so they've, they've followed exactly the international agenda. And what have they got in return for that? Nothing. You know, the, 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 the result of that has been disastrous. Η Ιρλανδία δεν τα είχε καταφέρει. Επιγόντω, το Νοέμβριο του 2010, ζήτησε και πήρε 85 δισεκατομμύρια ευρώ από το Διεθνέ Νομισματικό Ταμείο και τον Ευρωπαϊκό Μηχανισμό Βοήθεια. Behaved exactly as they were supposed to behave, uh, and instead of getting patted on the head, instead of getting the rewards, instead of the markets, these all-powerful markets turning around and saying, "Oh, you are such very, very good children. Here are some sweets, and now you can go to bed and and, and you can be happy, and we'll read you a fairy story." The markets are saying, "We don't believe you." You know, uh, you know. The, 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 I think the big lie in all of this is the idea that markets are rational. You know the markets tell you to do something and you do it and then they respond positively. What's happened is the market said oh, you must cut, you must cut, you must cut, and then when you cut, the market say, but because you're cutting, your economy is 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 going to go down the tube, so we can't we can't give you any money. I think Ireland should be held up as a good example for Greece. 
uh, but not in the way that the Greeks are being told. I think Ireland should be held up as an example of what happens uh, when you're a good boy. Um, that if you're a good boy and you expect to get the rewards, well, the Irish case tells you you won't. Of course, one of the reasons that we've had the bailout from the EU and from the IMF is to protect not the Irish banks, um, but European banks that are owed billions, tens, hundreds of billions by the Irish banking system. And in a way, it's the Irish people has been asked to bail out not really just the Irish banks, but European banks. And a lot of us think that's unfair. That's, um, uh, I think that we should have let the banks go to the wall and put them into receivership when we could have kept them going in receivership and disposed of their, uh, a, you know, come to a deal with creditors. And I see no reason why the Irish people should be saddled with that problem. A rude awakening for TDs on the Dáil's first day back. A cement truck crashed into the gates of Leinster House with anti-Anglo-Irish bank slogans emblazoned on its drum. The incident happened just after 7 o'clock this morning. As the truck approached the entrance, it's understood a Garda who was on duty had to jump out of the way. Witnesses said the driver exited the cabin through the roof. He then walked along the top of the vehicle and released a banner, which is believed to have said, politicians, the people have had enough. Σήμερα το φάντασμα του Κέλτικου Τίγρη πλανιέται στους εκατοντάδες έρημους οικισμούς που οικοδομήθηκαν την τελευταία δεκαετία. Στις άδειες γειτονιές και στα σπίτια όπου δεν ζει κανείς. Στα χωρίς ζωή επιβλητικά κτίρια του Δουβλίνου και στα εμπορικά κέντρα που ακόμα περιμένουν κόσμο. Στο νέο υπερπολιτελές αεροδρόμιο, σύμβολο της χλειδής και της οικονομικής ευμάρειας, το οποίο δεν χρησιμοποιεί κανείς. These are the elephants in the room. They're the, they're the monuments to our, to our foolishness. So we end up with um, an airport terminal that nobody, nobody is using. We end up with hundreds of thousands of houses throughout the country that nobody is living in. We end up with half-built housing estates. And we end up with a massive destruction of middle-class wealth. In 07, uh, Mr Dick Roach, the then Minister for Housing and whatever, stated that Ireland required 60,000 units per year for the next 10 years. So that was 600,000 houses we were going to wind up with. We can look back now and say, Jesus, where did he get his figure from? Where's this extra population coming from? Where are all those people going to come? Where's all the infrastructure going to come to create jobs to keep those people? Somebody got their figures woefully wrong. Nobody was keeping an eye and nobody cared what was going on as long as the cash was flowing. And we heard every other week the government is awash with money. We have so much money, we don't know what to do with it. The Celtic Tiger is roaring. Celtic Tiger is fairly quiet now and there's not much money. Where did all this money go? We were awash with money five years ago. Where did it go? Next question, was it ever there? και αυτή τη διαδικασία δεν έγινε ούτε μία γενική απεργία. Το μόνο που έκαναν τα συνδικάτα ήταν να διοργανώσουν μερικέ πορείε διαμαρτυρία στο Δουβλίνο. On any uh, basis of empirical evidence, uh, where countries have had general strikes, seems to me that it hasn't made much difference. 
Uh, so we, we have to try to focus on what will get us a different result. Uh, there's no point in just simply having a, 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 a general strike for the point of view of making everybody feel better. Yeah. It has to produce a result. It hasn't done much for your country. I think the, the, the trade unions are in a, a difficult situation um, because they are very heavily concentrated in the public sector. Uh, and the public sector unions are generally perceived by most of the public, rightly or wrongly, as having been, in a sense, complicit with government. You know, they, they were very adept at doing deals with government. To a large extent, the trade union movement has been emasculated, and the tension which usually is in, which used to be in society between the trade union movement and the capitalist class has really gone here, which is one of the explanations why we don't have social unrest. I want to say to you that we've been inspired by the people in Greece, right? And I think it's really important that they resist um, that whole neoliberal agenda and of the, their jobs being taken away. Um, and of people um, doing exactly the same things to them in Greece that they did here. I think the problem that we have here, and the same problem you have in Greece, is that we are paying for other people's mistakes. So it's the people that say ripped off this country. They got away with murder. I'd like to hear one or two of them actually saying sorry. And the time to keep accepting things, it has to stop somewhere. Because otherwise, the government will just treat you like mushrooms. Keep you in the dark and cover you in shit. Ο Φίλιπ Ουίλαν, ηλεκτρολόγος μηχανικός, είναι άνεργος εδώ και τέσσερα χρόνια. Ζει την οικογένειά του με το επίδομα των 640 ευρώ το οποίο η κυβέρνηση αποφάσισε πρόσφατα να περικόψει κι άλλο. They asked the, uh, the cheek of them to turn around and take a euro off the lowest paid workers in this country, I think it's an absolute disgrace. My advice now to any person that is skilled, that has a trade or a profession, and they're sitting here and they're not working, They're absolutely mad. Get up off your backside and go away and try and do something else because you're going to be lost here. Don't be hanging around here moaning to say that I can't get a job and I can't get a job. If you've no toys, have a go. At least you made an effort. Το εντυπωσιακό στάδιο Αβίβα έχει μόλις περατωθεί. Ένα ακόμα σύμβολο του κελτικού τύρι. Όμως κατά τραγική ηρωνία, η πρώτη εκδήλωση που φιλοξένησε δεν ήταν μια μεγάλη αθλητική διοργάνωση, αλλά ένα συνέδριο για προοπτικές μετανάστευσης στο εξωτερικό. Το γέμισαν χιλιάδες νέοι από όλη τη χώρα. It's just unfortunate at the moment that uh, an awful lot of people who are my age are, are leaving. And if, you, if I were to go and ask 
all of my friends who, are, who graduated with me from school, what are they doing? They all answer, uh, oh, I'm going to Canada, Australia, the US, to the continent. And uh, it's quite sad, but it's a reality. And it's not the first time Ireland has had to deal with such a problem like this. And particularly in the 80s, uh, people went to America and England, etc. But they did return, a lot of them. Uh, some of them found uh, happier lives where they, where they settled. Some years ago, when I, when I started university, it was pretty much guaranteed that we'd have a job and good prospects of getting quick promotion and making a good living. And now it seems that all of those hopes are now completely obliterated. Ireland is a small country. There's the rest of the world. There's plenty of opportunity out there. Um, I think I will definitely find a job in some other country. Irish societies is going to become, uh, demographically speaking, quite elderly because all of my generation are leaving. This year it's proposed that 100,000 uh, people of my age in their 20s or maybe their early 30s are going to leave that country. I think that the, the future uh, prospects of this country are very poor indeed. forefathers died uh, to get this country free we're Irish but we don't own Ireland Ireland is owned now by somebody from thousands of miles away and uh, it's a disgraceful situation to which our government or our bankers are responsible and from the plains over While Britannia's hunts with the long rage comes sailing through the foggy dew. That certainly is a humiliation for the Irish state and is quite a reversal. Um, we placed such store in gaining independence in 1922, and now to have it compromised in this way is, um, well, as I say, humiliating. What's wrong with an awful lot of the politicians and, and around this world, not just in this country, they don't act the way their head is built. And what I mean by that is, we have two ears and one mouth, but politicians have two mouths and one ear. They just don't listen. Oh, back through the glen. For a party then with a body man who I never shall see. But to and fro in my dreams I go and I kneel and pray for you. For slaves. 